Al Qaeda, Osama bin Laden, the Taliban, the people who wanted to do harm to our nation and to our way of life and our democracy, they got nothing on what this Republican Party is doing. 70% of the victims of terrorism in this country in the last 10 years have been victims of radical right-wing terrorism. That's a threat hiding in plain sight. There are elements of this that remind me of the rise of Islamic extremism. Give me a break. But here's the worst part of it. It's not just talking heads on MSNBC spewing these ridiculous claims. It's our own government. The rise of domestic violent extremism is a serious and growing national security threat. I want to make it clear what happened on January 6th was horrible. You know that and I know that. Even though tonight, I will show you there's more to the story. But I have no problem with the government charging people who stormed into our capital, destroyed things, or were threatening violence. No problem. What I do have a problem with is the radical leftist using that single event as an excuse to target all conservatives, to declare all of us threats to the very country we're trying so hard to save. What we are witnessing is the full embrace of the Republican Party of the most extreme and radical and racist elements of their base. They're the party that championed domestic terrorism. The Republican Party is basically a domestic terrorist cell at this point. Because ever since that small idiotic faction stepped inside those halls, that is exactly what's been happening. We're getting fired, kicked out of school, the military. We're blocked by big tech, losing our rights more and more every day. The left is using fear to intimidate half of the country into following their demands. So who's the real terror threat? America, this is just the beginning. Tonight, I will show you how the far left is working to ensure our voices are forever silenced. Tonight, the new war on terror. Innocent until proven conservative. Hello, America. This is not a war on terror. This is a coming war of terror on half the country. The left has declared war, and it's not against a nation state or a terror group. It is a war on any person or idea that stands in the way of their radicalism. And they are weaponizing every government institution to come after people like you and me. This is quite a charge to make. We will show you why we are making these charges tonight and further those concerns and those charges in the coming days and weeks on this program and on my radio program. But the intelligence community, the Department of Homeland Security, even private corporations are trying to silence people and trying to categorize them as a dangerous terror threat. Outside of the McCarthy era, the communist witch hunt. We have never seen what is happening now, and I will prove it to you in a few minutes. Years from now, we might look back on January 6th on that riot and say, that was the day it all began. That's what they were waiting for. That's when innocent until proven conservative started. A few questions tonight and some answers. Why are they hoarding over 14,000 hours of CCTV footage from January 6th? Why are they not being transparent with the domestic terror threats that we keep seeing being issued? Why is everybody seemingly trying to create the illusion that right-wing terror is not only on the rise, but the biggest threat since the Civil War? Tonight, I'm going to try to answer those questions, but it all boils down to this. I believe they are gearing up to label anyone and everything that doesn't bend a knee into a radical. Oh, you're pro-life? You're a domestic terrorist. Oh, oppose lockdowns, mask mandates, pro-Second Amendment? Yeah, that's what I thought. You support the election laws like the ones that ask for ID for voters? White supremacist. I spent this last weekend watching uh, or teaching true American history to families all across the country as part of a program I'm doing with Mercury One. This is when we open up our artifact vault and show you the actual founding documents that prove what our story really is. But sitting in that artifact vault, a few pieces of other darker pieces of history came to mind. And they now serve as warnings to what might happen should we lose our way or fail to stand. I want to show you a chair. This is one of those things. 
the arm restraints give them away and what it was used for. Uh, you'll see the uh, wheelchair of FDR behind it, but right there by the wheel, you will see straps. This was an interrogation chair used by the Nazis for anyone who is a person of interest that were brought in for questioning. Underneath the seat is the Nazi symbol and the words roughly translated as the Department of Homeland Security. That was the Nazis' DHS. Now here's ours. In January, they issued the first terror bulletin since the death of the Iranian Quds Force commander. Keep in mind, these warnings are extraordinarily rare. But look who they were warning about. Quote, Individuals frustrated with the exercise of governmental authority and the presidential transition, as well as other perceived grievances and ideological causes fueled by false narratives. Now, it's pretty obvious who they're talking about, right? Antifa? No, no. Black Lives Matter? No. If you get your news from MSNBC or CNN, you're probably not on the watch list. This is a very big deal. If the Department of Homeland Security is willing to issue a massive nationwide warning about crazy right-wing terrorists, and I'm quoting, you'd sure be able to back them up, right? You gotta show me your receipt, show me your work. But as you can imagine, they refuse to tell us what this is all about. In fact, they admit it in the bulletin itself. Let me quote, DHS does not have any information to indicate a specific credible plot. So then what are you warning about? There have been zero attacks from right-wing domestic terrorists during the duration DHS set for this warning, and it was set to expire at the end of April. Unfortunately, just last week, DHS has issued another warning that extends the original until August. Listen to this from the bulletin, quote, the homeland is facing threats that have evolved significantly and become increasingly complex and volatile in 2021. Where? I mean, you're putting us on a high alert. I'd like to help. I, I don't want violence. I don't want domestic extremists. I don't want people who claim to be on my side and side of the Constitution doing things. Where are these people? What do you have? Why will you not disclose to us what we're supposed to be so afraid of? And how is no one questioning all of this? Well, maybe because if you do, if you have the audacity to pose a question, they immediately shut you down. And America, it's only going to get harder from here. You must begin to find your courage and stand up now. Last week, a Space Force officer was fired from his post for denouncing critical race theory. He accurately explained that critical race theory comes from Marxism. That's true. There is nothing inaccurate about that statement at all. But it does have one big problem. Critical race theory is being pushed by the Biden administration, including Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin. For them, no one is allowed to point this stuff out. You cannot ask questions. As of today, the Pentagon still won't clarify why one of their commanders was fired, as if we need them to clarify. What made this high-ranking officer so dangerous for them was that he had too much truth that he couldn't stay silent anymore on. He was willing to say the truth that Marxism is a threat to our republic. He called out Lloyd Austin for issuing a stand-down order for the military to find all those right-wing extremists. He also said something I haven't heard anywhere. He said that the military was given a book calling the January 6th riot an extremist event. Okay, however, it excluded the civil unrest from both Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Well, that doesn't sound like truth. That sounds like indoctrination. It's no wonder they had to shut this guy down and shut him up. Basically, actually fighting for your country and the Constitution in this day and age, I guess makes you enemy number one to the government. This is not going to stop. It's going to get worse. It's been over four months now since the January 6th riot at the Capitol. 
The Biden administration continues to use that act to weaponize every single lever in the U.S. government to make it appear that right-wing domestic terror is the greatest threat to our country. Now, I'm going to come back to that later in the show, but they actually said that. So what's the game here? I want to go back to the Space Force commander that was fired. He summed it up perfectly in an interview with the Washington Examiner. Quote, What you see happening in the U.S. military at the moment is if you are conservative, then you are lumped into a group of people who are labeled extremists, if you're willing to voice your views. And if you're aligned by the left, then it's okay to be an activist online because no one's going to hold you accountable, end quote. That's exactly right. And as I'll show you in a few minutes, they're building an intelligence apparatus that lumps anyone that has conservative beliefs into one big pot That includes white supremacists and domestic extremists. I will show you tomorrow, first thing on the radio, that you now have local prosecutors aiding in blacklists. It's all being built right now. And if you dare question what they're doing, you will be silenced. Asking questions has now become dangerous, and big tech is fully on board. If you're watching this on YouTube tonight, you might not get that luxury in the very near future. That's why I urge you to go to blazetv.com and subscribe. We will help you with the news, understand the news. We will be honest to a fault, I think. We will keep questioning this government. And I don't care what Silicon Valley likes or doesn't like. Go to blazetv.com and please join us in this fight. Now, the questions they don't want anybody asking, next. Ever since uh, Uno, about a year ago, tried Rough Greens, he's a completely different dog. I I hear from people all the time who say they have had the exact same experience. They heard me talking about Rough Greens on the program, and a a lot of times they're skeptical. I mean, I would be too. Some boob on TV or on radio. Hey, this will make your dog be better. Yeah, he's going to be much more active. He's going to be healthier. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Let me tell you this, my dog would not eat. This isn't a dog food. This is, I don't know, it's just like you sprinkle it on top and he wolfs it down. He is now pushing the bowl all around the floor with his nose, trying to lick all of it off. It's chock full of vitamins and minerals, probiotics and omega oils, all the things your dog's diet needs so he can be healthy. My dog was easy. From the first time he tried Rough Greens, Uno was in love. Uh, Some dogs may not like the flavor. I don't know. Dr. Dennis Black, he's the guy who invented this stuff. Uh, He wants to make sure that you give it a try and you don't have to pay for it. So right now he's got a special gift available. You can get a free bag of small sample size of Rough Greens for your dog to try out. All you pay is shipping. Just go to roughgreens.com slash back or call 833-GLEN33. It's 833-GLEN33. As we saw with the Space Force officer, we can't fly this alone. We have got to come together as a group and stand. Just let your voices be heard. Get loud. Because if you don't, they will pick us off one by one. And we're already playing catch up here. We cannot afford to let any of this stuff go unanswered. So I have four questions tonight that need some serious answers from someone in our government. All of us need to be blasting these questions out on our social media 24-7. Here's the first question. Why are the people that attended the January 6th riot being treated like enemy combatants at Guantanamo? You haven't read this story anywhere, but the U.S. government versus the January 6th attendees has gotten insane. Now, I want to make sure I'm very clear. I'm not excusing the actions of some of the rioters that day. Many of them needed to be charged. But I am questioning the actions and motivations of the Biden administration and the Department of Justice in their response. Last month, the lead prosecutor investigating January 6th riot left the Justice Department. Why? Did anybody hear about this? A judge overseeing the investigations lambasted the DOJ for giving interviews to the media, saying, quote, these types of statements in the media have the potential to affect the jury pool and the rights of these defendants. The prosecutor in question, Michael Sherwin, had recently given an interview on 60 Minutes where he disclosed that the defendants could be charged with sedition. Listen to this. 
after the 6th, we had an inauguration on the 20th. So I wanted to ensure, and our office wanted to ensure that there was shock and all that we could charge as many people as possible before the 20th. And it worked because we saw through media posts that people were afraid to come back to DC because they were like, if we go there, we're gonna get charged. Wait, shock and awe to whip the media into a frenzy and scare people out of DC? That's an infringement of our First Amendment right. This is from a federal prosecutor who's supposed to def be defending our rights. Isn't it the job of the justice system to present facts and not play media games? For the vast majority of people at the January 6th rally, those that were there just to peacefully protest, why are they being scared out of Washington, D.C.? Is this about justice or is it intimidation and ideological punishment? I have to ask because there's another shoe to drop, and that is the prison system. For those arrested on January 6th, it looks more like Guantanamo Bay or Abu Ghraib than an American jail. Consider this for a second. Those that have been arrested for the riot haven't been convicted of a crime yet. One of the defendants, Jacob Lane, recently wrote to his father, I've been in solitary confinement for a hundred days now, and I haven't been convicted of any crime with no end of this in sight. One of the accused lawyers recently said this, quote, it is impossible to have a free flowing conversation with your clients because the meetings are in open cages where there is no confidentiality. Everyone can hear your conversation, including the prison guards. If a detainee meets with a lawyer in person at the jail, he must then quarantine for 14 days as retaliation. Attorney client privilege is non-existent. So they're being denied access to lawyers, families, held in solitary confinement, and in other cases, allegedly much worse. One detainee said he was zip tied and beaten by the prison guards. The skin was ripped from his wrist, his nose was broken and his jaw was dislocated. Does this sound like the United States of America or a gulag? in some Marxist, communist, socialist country. I wish I could say I have a hard time reporting this because it is, there's nobody else, there's nobody else saying this, just a few sketchy people. No, even Elizabeth Warren is crying foul here. This is more than just street justice being delved out by the justice system. This is intimidation for everyone else. You now heard it from the disgraced lead prosecutor. They knew this stuff would get out in the media. This is, quote, shock and awe, instilling fear in anyone that might have the idea to protest. You want to go to jail? Good. We'll beat you. We'll break your nose. We'll tear the skin off of your arms, and you'll be in solitary confinement. Now, that's for anybody who protests, but notice I didn't say riot. Have you seen any peaceful demonstrations in D.C. lately from anyone on the right? Zero. Exactly the way they want it. Question number two. Why is the government hoarding 14,000 hours of CCTV footage from January 6th? The Capitol Police provided more than 14,000 hours of footage to Congress. We haven't seen any of it. All we've seen is cherry-picked clips from reporters that were there that day. Yes, some of it was bad. But why are clips like this one just coming out now? Watch. The police here are willing to work with us and cooperate peacefully, like our First Amendment allows. Gather more Americans under the condition that they will come and gather peacefully to discuss what needs to be done to save our country. Watch. Watch. This must be peaceful. Now, why haven't we seen the official CCTV footage of that? Maybe because you can't stand in front of America as Biden did and claim that what happened on January 6th was the greatest threat to our country since the Civil War. Maybe that's why. How many have heard the words armed insurrection when they talk about January 6th? 
Well, I want to show you something else the media really didn't cover. The line of questioning from Senator Ron Johnson to the FBI Assistant Director of Counterterrorism, Jill Sanborn. Watch and listen. How many firearms were uh, confiscated uh, in the Capitol or, or on Capitol grounds during that day? To my knowledge, we have not recovered any on that day from any other arrests at the scene at this point. But I don't want to speak on behalf of Metro and Capitol Police, okay. but to my knowledge, none. How, how many shots None. were fired that we know of? I believe the only shots that were fired were the ones that resulted in the death of the um, one lady. And who fired that? Not the protesters. An armed insurrection. By the way, that one lady was Ashley Babbitt. Say her name. She was shot and killed by Capitol Police. FBI Director Ray testified that the group responsible for the riot was, quote, the smallest group numerically. So why is there this nationwide witch hunt for the crazy right wing domestic terrorists? Why did the House just pass a 9-11 style commission to further look into the riot? Well, here's Senator Mitch McConnell on the actions that have already happened in the investigation. Federal law enforcement have made at least 445 arrests and counting relating to crimes committed that day. Hundreds of those people have been charged. Law enforcement investigations are ongoing mm. and federal authorities say they expect to arrest at least 100 or so more. Now that is really interesting. So why a congressional commission? It has absolutely nothing to do with investigating what happened on that day, because that's already done. This is about innocent until proven conservative. It's about who can we lump in with this small group that's really to blame? Who else will be caught up in the dragnet? You? Me? I warn you, there is no limit to politicians and what they will do, the depravity they will soup, uh, stoop to if given this political weapon of mass destruction. And that is exactly what this is. What constitutes a need for a terror commission these days? Going off what currently happened, if that's an attack on D.C., let me show you some things. Do you remember when Black Lives Matter activists set fire to the Capitol last summer? This is what D.C. looked like from the air. There was no commission that was called for. Hey, maybe it's just because it was an attack on a Capitol building itself. Well, leftist weather underground uh, uh, members bombed the Capitol building in 1971. How many commissions? None. An offshoot of the weather underground did it again in 1983. How many commissions? Zero. Oh, but there's an extra added benefit. One of the people that was charged with that attack, it was a woman. Her name, Susan Rosenberg. Bill Clinton commuted her sentence. Now where is she? Well, she went on to an organization that works with Black Lives Matter. Yes, Thousand Currents. Two Capitol building bombings. One of the members went on to work with a group that has been burning U.S. cities, including Washington, D.C., but no commission was ever needed. More in a minute. All right, I want to talk to you about Built Bar, a revolution in the world of protein bars because it's made by people who first wanted to make something that tastes really good and second wanted to make something that was actually good for you. The order of how you do that matters. If you're just trying to make it uh, you know, really good for you and taste comes second, it's going to taste like crap. Built Bars are high in protein and fiber, low in calories and carbs, and I mean three to five net carbs. So they're great even if you're doing something like keto. But here's the best part. Their first priority was made, make it taste good. That's why it comes in a variety of flavors, all of them amazing. Cookies and cream, uh, caramel brownie, raspberry, they're so good. If you have resolved to lose weight and get fit, don't give up on your resolution. Try Built Bar. BuiltBar.com. Use the promo code BEC15. Save 15% off your first order. Promo code BEC15. BuiltBar.com. Question number three tonight that needs to be answered. Why is the government refusing transparency over these domestic terrorism threats? I want to go back to that Department of Homeland Security terror bull bulletin. They admit that there is no specific credible plot. So then why were there thousands of National Guard troops patrolling Washington, D.C.? 
They only left on Sunday. Or did they? The House recently passed a $1.9 billion funding bill called the Emergency Security Supplemental to respond to January 6 Appropriations Act. It includes $200 million to keep a National Guard unit in the Capitol. You won't see them standing post. Oh, but they still will be there. And I again ask, why? What is the justification for this? The government won't say. By the way, the justification on why they had them there until April came from the U.S. Postal Service that is, has an extra little arm in the Postal Service that is now spying on regular everyday Americans. Did you know that? Now, Judicial Watch has full, filed multiple Freedom of Information Act requests to find out what's going on, but the government has refused every single one. It is our right to petition and question the government. It is their responsibility to answer. But it's clear what's going on. Whatever it is, the government wants this to remain a secret. So question number four, why are they giving the illusion that right-wing terror is on the rise? Two weeks ago, both the Attorney General and the DHS Secretary appeared before the Senate Appropriations Committee. The hearing was all about domestic extremism. And you'll never guess what they said the greatest threat to our country is right now. Well, maybe you can. Yeah, white supremacists and the far right. This is coming from the highest echelons of the government with zero explanation as to why they're saying it. Zero. Now, maybe I have read too many history books to be comfortable with the path that we are now on. Warning. We, I guess we're just supposed to blindly and obediently take them at their word. Warning. White supremacists are everywhere. Warning. They give us no transparency because they don't have to. Instead, they get their allies both in the mainstream media and partisan think tanks to do it for them. Kind of like this recent investigation from the Washington Post. The Washington Post claims that domestic extremism is surging at a rate not seen in over 25 years. And they put the blame on, quote, white supremacist, anti-Muslim and anti-government extremist on the far right. Wow, I would have said it was Antifa or BLM, but no, no. Now, this is in the Washington Post, so it's got to be true, right? Well, we did a little digging and found out that the data that they are using comes from a little group called the Center for Strategic and International Studies. More specifically, this report. Okay, something about this new study seemed a little odd and call me a skeptic. Um, but we decided as a group to do a little digging into this. So my producers did. They were able to get the entire list of data that the CSIS had compiled that that Washington Post article used to reach their analysis. And once, once they started going through some of the cases on my staff, they noticed something. We randomly picked through a few of the cases labeled as far-right violence. Some of the cases were debatable and uh, up in the air at best. And at worst, they were blatantly blaming a political side with zero evidence. Let me show some of these cases with you. July 25th, 2020, Austin, Texas. Garrett Foster was shot and killed at a BLM rally. After the shooter, who was later identified as Sergeant Daniel Perry, drove his car in the direction of the protesters. Daniel Perry then claimed that Foster ordered Perry to roll down his window with his gun and then aimed it at him. So Perry fired in fear. This was labeled as far-right violence? There was no explicit political statement that was even said during the incident. Here are the facts. A BLM activist was shot. Daniel Perry was driving near the protest and the protesters were surrounding his car. Daniel Perry was a conservative. But that's it. Is that enough evidence to deduce that this was politically motivated by right-wing hatred? Well, maybe, maybe if that standard was consistent with CSIS, which ignored nearly every single crime committed by BLM and Antifa members just during the summer of 2020. Here's another case, March 14th, 
2020, Midland, Texas. Jose Gomez attacked and stabbed an Asian family of four, stabbing three of them, and harmed a Sam's Club employee who intervened. This was a racially charged attack. Gomez admitted that. He thought that the family was Chinese and they were infecting people with COVID. Okay, the guy was crazy. Okay, but was he right-wing nutjob? There is nothing known of his political leaning. Every single article regarding the situation could not, would not label Gomez as a conservative right-wing activist. But this case was officially labeled as far-right violence. Now, I could go on, but you can do it yourself. This report is littered with bogus claims. Now, how did the Washington Post not see this? But we did. The truth is, they did or they didn't even look because they don't care. This is what this is why people say the media is just playing their part like good little leftist soldiers. They just accept anything, I guess. Or is it more than that? The Biden administration will make their baseless claims and the mainstream media manufactures the narrative. So where is this all leading to? A little warning. It's going to get a lot worse. Here's the latest on FISA. It's being weaponized like never before. The secret court, this gave the FBI backdoor access to American private communications without any proper justification. The FISA court claims they're fixing the problem. But how do you trust that when the people who are running the show now are the same ones that railroaded Donald Trump and Carter Page by lying to FISA? You seriously cannot make this stuff up. By and large, outside of FISA, the government is limited on how they can spy on you. Uh Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's what they, 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 they say to you. And, but if they think that you're a white supremacist, I mean, you know, maybe you're one of those nuts, or, you know, pro-life or pro-Second Amendment. How can they possibly spy on your emails, texts, and direct messages without violating that pesky little thing called the Bill of Rights? <laughs> Never fear. Now, not just the post office, strangely, and NSA, but private companies don't have the same restrictions as the government does. The Department of Homeland Security is planning to partner with private tech firms to come after you. This is insane. This is the Chinese surveillance state, but using American private companies to do the dirty work. Oh, well, they're used to it. They're doing it over in Chinese, in China. They don't have to write any new laws over here or over there. They just turn corporate America against us. The government has created the boogeyman. We're all about to be lumped into the same barrel. Silicon Valley built the most dangerous surveillance tool on the planet, and we gave them everything. And our government is now using that to make sure that your voice and your questions, if they don't like them, are silenced. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. In America, we're all innocent until proven conservative. Back in a minute. So if you are one of the millions of Americans who suffer every day from pain, I want you to listen up. There is hope, and it comes in the form of Relief Factor. Every day I see testimonials of people who have tried Relief Factor for their their pain. They got their life back. And I know it can happen firsthand. After a couple of years ago, um, uh, I I can stand here today relatively pain-free. I mean, I could not even write anymore. I don't know if you've been following me on Instagram with my painting, but I couldn't paint. I couldn't, well, I mean, I couldn't paint because I sucked at it, but also I couldn't paint because I couldn't hold a paintbrush. My pain was so bad. Thanks to Relief Factor, I'm out of that pain. Relief Factor, get your life back. Just try it for three weeks. If it's not working for you in three weeks, stop taking it. But 70% of the people who try Relief Factor for three weeks go on to order more because it's working. Do it now. 1995, drug-free, natural way to get out of pain. 800 583 800-500-8384, relieffactor.com. The man who's been talking out and speaking out about this uh, and his family doing the same for quite some time is Senator Rand Paul. Welcome to the program, sir. Um, let me first start with this. Um, 
your family has been under attack relentlessly. There was now a mysterious package that was sent to your house. First of all, how is everybody in your family? You know, I think, you know, we're both shaken up a little bit. My wife was at home and I was traveling back to D.C., but it is disconcerting to go to your mailbox and get a uh, envelope full of powder. And, uh, you know, you don't know what to do. She knew to wash her hands. She didn't know whether she needed to change clothes. Did she need to start on antibiotics? If it's anthrax, you can start on antibiotics, but you have to take it for 60 days. Um, fortunately, anthrax is hard to come by, and so it's more likely to be a hoax. But at the same time, it's still meant to terrorize. Oh, yeah. They're sending a message that I need to be quiet or else. You have been personally attacked multiple times. Um, a couple of years ago, Steve Scalise was almost killed, as, as were almost a third of the Republicans in the House. And they're not asking for a committee on any of these things. This January 6th committee seems really, really dangerous. Is it just me? I was there at the ball field that day. Steve Scalise almost died. He had his entire blood was transfused in the first 24 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, they couldn't even close him for several days because he was so mortally wounded. He was within minutes of dying. Uh, there were probably 20 congressmen in the first base dug it, dug out. Fortunately, it was submerged. The bullets were careening off the dirt and off the back bench where you sit in the dugout. Fortunately, nobody was killed, but five people were shot. Yeah, no investigation. It was a big supporter of Bernie Sanders. But you know what? Mm. We were big people. We said, you know what? Bernie Sanders should not be blamed because some crazy supporter of his shot us. But they didn't return that favor. When it was Trump, they said, oh, you know, because, uh, you know, they were followers of Trump, all of a sudden uh, Donald Trump's blamed and every Republican's blamed. So it is a double standard. Oh. And uh, as far as wanting to have some sort of commission on January 6th, look, it's being investigated. Um, I think that they want it purely as a distraction and they want it because they want to do it, use it for political purposes. So what is the is it just uh, that they want to ring the bell over and over and over again? Or is there something more nefarious? Because they are painting half of the nation as uh, dangerous radicals. And I know I'm constitutional. I know you are, too. We're fighting to just have a country that abides by the Constitution. Um, but I don't think that's yep. where they're going. I mean, look at the bill that they just uh, signed in to keep the National Guard there, keep this terror alert going until August. What is this about, Rand? Well, the interesting thing about January 6th is they are investigating anybody that was in D.C. They're scouring your visa records. They're scouring your bank records. Um, they're looking at your phone geolocation. All of that is unconstitutional. The Fourth Amendment says if they have probable cause that you've committed a crime, coming to D.C. to a rally for President Trump is not a crime. And so the vast majority of the 20,000 or 30,000 that were here, probably 95 percent of them did not enter into the Capitol illegally or to commit any violence. And yet they're all being investigated um, by illegally searching their bank and visa records. So what, what, what recourse do we have? How do I mean? Our Constitution has been trampled on for a while, but it is being shredded and burned now. The FISA uh, rulings recently, this, searching your phone records? For what? You, you, you have one recourse, and that's uh, by suing and, and defending yourself in court, but that costs millions of dollars, and most average Americans don't have the resources to take this to the Supreme Court. I think if you took this to the Supreme Court, there's a chance that the Supreme Court actually might rule correctly on this. The other way you can fight this is obviously through elections. You know, you try to fight for better representation. Elections have consequences. The fact that we lost both of the Republican seats in, in the Senate in Georgia makes a difference. So I tell people don't give up. You know, don't think this is the end times or the end of the world. It's, it's, a, it's a bad time for our country. It's a bad time for the Constitution and for those who believe in the Constitution. But that doesn't mean give up. That means we redouble our efforts. We have um, the Justice Department um, going for FISA uh, warrants. They're, they're being granted FISA warrants. They're, they're, it's, it's not legal. They don't have the evidence. They're getting it anyway. Uh, we have the post office. I didn't even know the post office had a spy division. 
What um, else is there, Rand, that people don't know about? <laughs> well, uh, there are things I probably don't know about. For example, when they were looking at all of our phone records, nobody in Congress knew anything about it. They were searching all of our phone records and our metadata, and they did this for years. And then James Clapper, you remember Clapper, was mm -hmm. the director of national intelligence under Obama. He came to Congress and lied about it. So, yes, there's a lot of things going on. And to defend the Constitution, we have to have the ability to fight some of these cases in court. I think we actually can win all the way up to the Supreme Court. But there have to be the resources and there will have to be some select cases. And people should take these. And there are different groups that are sort of like the libertarian leaning um, civil liberties groups right. do fight some of these cases on privacy and we need to fight them. But uh, elections are part of it. But uh, I am concerned about what's going on and I am concerned about the idea that we are somehow going to criminalize uh, going to a, uh, you know, assembly, assembling for a candidate is somehow going to be criminalized. Uh, I, uh, I tell you, I'm, I'm enough of a historian to know uh, this is how really bad things begin. It doesn't mean that this will end that way, but we got to get off this road. Um, are, are your right. colleagues as upset about this as you are? You know, I think the January 6th thing is sort of, you know, Republicans on one side and Democrats on the other. Most Republicans realize that is being done for political purposes and that they want to use this till the next election. It also is a distraction from the violence that's occurring in Portland and Seattle and Minneapolis, the huge increase in murders uh, in the cities where they're defunding the police. They don't want to talk about that. And the bad thing is, is we did have the high moral ground before January 6th. People did misbehave. People mm -hmm. did commit crime, commit violence, and they should be punished. But we had the high moral ground. Nobody on our side was doing this before January 6th. It was really all on the other side, the anarchist and Antifa and the left wing crazies. And they're still doing it, but nobody's talking about it because everybody's now has a, a something shiny new object, which is January 6th to is, look at. Is it going to pass? I know Romney said he was going to vote for it. I can't imagine why, but I, I don't ever try to second guess Mitt Romney. It, it will not pass. It will not pass unless they break the filibuster. Manchin has said he's not going to break the filibuster. So as long as Manchin stays strong on keeping the filibuster, most of these terribly partisan things are not going to pass. Um, I do fear, though, that they are going to have um, at least another significant spending bill and a significant increase in taxes that they'll do by simple majority through this uh, thing called budget reconciliation. So I think that does happen. I don't think they're going to be able to get D.C. as a state. I don't think they're going to be able to federalize the elections if the filibuster holds. There are not 10 Republicans that will vote with them. And uh, the filibuster is a pretty important thing. And I think you know, but not all your viewers will know, that even Donald Trump was for getting rid of it. When we had Republicans in the House and the Senate and the presidency, he was frustrated. But many of us, myself included, we said we're keeping the filibuster even when we are in charge because it's for when you're not in charge. And there are more bad ideas, more big government ideas, more ideas that take your civil liberties come from Congress than uh, not. So we should always be vigilant to try to make sure that it takes, you know, 60 votes to get anything through the Senate. Uh, let me uh, let me switch topics. Um, and there are so many things, uh, Senator Paul, I would love to ask you about. But uh, and everything seems like everything is on fire. Um, but let's switch to covid today. Um, Biden shut the Trump investigation down uh, on the Wuhan virus in the labs. We know that the United States and Fauci sent money to the Wuhan lab. Um, the press is saying they just they didn't believe it because Trump said it. That is so ridiculous. Even I don't care who says things. If they make a claim, my staff checks it out. Just I think that's crazy. No way it happened. But can somebody check this out? They weren't just they weren't just not reporting it. Social media was shutting everything down that led anyone to believe that that could even be a possibility. One, what do you know about the Wuhan lab? Why all of a sudden are we, is everybody okay with talking about it? And the third one is, if it's true, what is anyone gonna do about it? What, how do you punish China? 
The good news is we are starting to get to the truth. For a year now, anybody who's brought up the possibility that this came from the Wuhan lab has been branded as a conspiracy theorist and dismissed, shut down from Twitter, shut down from Facebook. They have tried to censor this. But in the last two weeks, a sea change has happened. Even on MSNBC, they're now talking about the possibility that this virus came from Wuhan. There's a bunch of circumstantial evidence that points in that direction. Number one, there has been no animal host found that mm -hmm. has COVID. Mm -hmm. So they looked at the wet market and they said, oh, it came from the wet market. They studied thousands of animals. No animal had COVID. Even more interesting than that, most of the time COVID comes from bats to an intermediate animal to humans. So what they did is they went and took COVID and they tried to infect bats with it. They found that it doesn't infect bats readily. So they can't find an intermediate host. Wow. It doesn't infect bats readily, but guess who it does infect readily? Humans. So it appears as if this virus is somehow adapted for humans. Could that have happened in nature? Maybe, but some of the evidence, a lot of the evidence is pointing otherwise. The three people they found now that they're releasing, some intelligence person is releasing that three people who worked in the lab in November of 2019 actually uh, were sick with something that appears to be the virus. That also points in that direction. All right. But so one of the things that convinced. I, I only have about what, 40 seconds here. So what if it's true? What are what do we do? First thing we can do is my amendment that passed yesterday, quit funding the Chinese research. You know, this yes. was Dr. Fauci funding the research. He approved it. He should be immediately dismissed, fired, never listened to again. Yes. He's an advocate for this kind of research, and he is an advocate and an apologist for funding China. He should be gone immediately. And China? You, as you said, it's difficult to know what to do or how to punish China, but we should no longer fund them. And any cooperation should be dependent. If they want cooperation, they want trade, any of the things they want with us should be dependent on them being forthcoming. One final thing, there are yeah. 11 labs in our country that do gain of function, where they create super viruses. We need to look at those labs and decide whether we should be doing that research even in our country. Thank you so much, Senator Rand Paul. Back in a minute. So in about 11 hours from now, 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to start my radio program with a story about how this is not just a federal problem. This is actually being inserted and you are being tracked and monitored at a local level. It is astounding information. That'll be first thing tomorrow on the radio program. It is time, America, to... Uh, square yourself, stand up straight, and speak the truth out loud. Damn the torpedoes. Here we go. Good night.